When I come here in the morning, first of all, I'm really tired, but it's really great because you see a lot of small items around the house that were from the teams before. Like we have a huge cow in the entrance of the first floor. It feels like being part of something big, but also something very familiar and being part of the team of this year, but also from the past years. One of the most important places for forward-thinking business ideas. It's a very good podium for a united world. The IEC is organized completely independently, not too far away in a nice Renaissance villa with view on St. Gallen. In this house is a lot of history of the past 50 years of St. Gallen Symposium. And there are small things everywhere that remind us of how long this initiative really lives. I was part of the team organizing the symposium 2008, a time where many buildings at the university were undergoing renovation and reconstruction, and the symposium had to take place on a temporary, completely new symposium site. There was only one question in the room, how do we get it done? And despite the ambition to do it ourselves, we reached out to the alumni community asking for support. What happened then still gives me goosebumps today, an army of former team members offered their support and joined forces with the then current ISC team. And while we used to have the symposium site ready about 24 hours before the first guests would arrive, I still remember that moment when we finished logistical preparations only 30 minutes before the first guest was arriving at the symposium site. And we were welcoming our participants full of joy and full of pride. And I think it's a perfect example of how strong the ISC community really is. You know, St. Gallen may be an idea, but the spirit of St. Gallen is the students. I would like to first of all tell you how delighted I am to be here with you in St. Gallen. You have proven from St. Gallen and from this university that greatness has nothing to do with bigness. And I hope you will continue in that spirit. I think nowadays it needs a St. Gallen Symposium more than ever because everyone is isolated and it's really hard to communicate with each other. And exactly now it is important to recreate our society and talk to each other, older people and younger people throughout the generations. And this is exactly what the St. Gallen Symposium stands for. Dear Madam Federal Councillor, dear Professor Wolfgang Schürer, dear Mr. Peter Woser, dear Beat Ulrich, Your Excellencies, and most importantly, dear students, trust matters. The topic of this year's St. Gallen Symposium captures the spirit which allowed the funding of a unique event that is inextricably linked with our university. As the university president, between 1966 and 1970, Professor Francesco Knecharek established the basis of a mutual trust with students by inviting them to his home and to discuss not only academic affairs, but also world events. As students in other cities grew increasingly more militant and demanding, Professor Knecharek shared his worries about a possible spillover 
of the revolutionary spirit and tendencies in St. Gallen. Instead, the atmosphere of this intergenerational dialogue between the university president and an inspired circle of students gave birth to a special initiative, namely to seek uh, another way to address social tensions and inspire systemic change. It was Wolfgang Schürer, who had the vision of what first be uh, known as Internationales Managementgespräch and is now, 50 years later, the St. Gallen Symposium. His colleagues, Clemens Ernst Brinkmeier, Karl, Franz Karl Kriegler, Urs Schneider and Terje E. Wölner Hansen supported the idea and together they worked strongly to implement the project. Professor Knejarek and his successor, Professor Willy Geiger, trusted the students and supported their idea of bringing established managers and decision makers together with the next generation of leaders. Eyed suspiciously by some at first, this form of exchange fulfilled the longing for debate in a time when violence seemed to have replaced dialogue. The vision of an international student committee, as the organizers came to be known, was simultaneously timely, ahead of its time and timeless. It was timely in that it defied the spirit of the times that intergenerational trust was out of reach. It was ahead of its time as it curated encounters in which established and prospective leaders learned from each other. The symposium fostered an environment of transgenerational learning and reverse mentoring before these concepts became trendy. At the same time, it succeeded in developing a sensorium for dealing with and anticipating important societal questions. That way, the symposium sowed the seeds of trust between generations, irrespective of people's origins and station in life. And the vision of the symposium proved to be timeless. Well, for aren't we in constant need of dialogue? And haven't we experienced in the recent times how many societies struggle to foster a climate conducive to a respectful and fruitful debate? The format may have evolved over times and it keeps, as we see, evolving. But the symposium has always stayed true to its core idea, which will matter tomorrow as much as it does today. Generations of established and prospective leaders agree, which is why the symposium has been able to forge strong bonds between its supporters. Max Schmidheini was among the first to have confidence in the vision of the original International Students Committee. And his two sons, Stefan and especially Thomas Schmidheini, and the Max Schmidheini Foundation remain a vital sounding board and source of support. Generations of students have worked tirelessly to keep the symposium's idea alive and to prepare the grounds for debate to leave a mark on all participants. It is to these generations of students that the university owes a huge thank you. Each year, 35 students put their studies practically on hold and invest their creative energies into all aspects of this unique venture. And yet another group of dedicated students volunteers to take on various practical tasks necessary during the conference in May. Each year, I'm in awe of all of our students' enthusiasm, commitment and creativity and care. Thank you for that. Trust matters. Seldom has been placed trust in worse hands than when Professor Knejarek gave the first International Students Committee the green light for their vision. They have created a flagship event for St. Gallen and for his university, which connects generations of leaders all around the world. And we all trust the next generation of students uh, and the St. Gallen Foundation 
to carry on this precious legacy. It is to this commitment that I think uh, I extend my heartfelt congratulations for 50 inspiring years. The founding fathers of the symposium, of course, Wolfgang Schürer, and not to forget his wife, Monika Schürer. To the generations of uh, ISC alumni, to the current committee of members and the St. Gallen Foundation, in particular, the CEO, Beat Ulrich. To the chairman, Peter Foser, and the entire board of trustees and all their predecessors. And to all of you whose thoughts and ideas have shaped the symposium and thus our future. The University of St. Gallen is proud and honored to be the symposium's home basis and academic framework. We even want to strengthen these ties in future. So I close with my wish, here's to another decade. Thank you very much. Now I give the floor to Christian Sutter, the president of the ISC alumni. Thank you, Professor Aaron Seller. Dear Madam Councillor, dear Excellencies, and dear friends of the St. Gallen Symposium. It is exactly five years ago that I first stood on this stage. As a member of the International Students Committee, I was given the honor to hold the closing speech of the 46th St. Gallen Symposium. A moment that I will never forget, at the end of one of the most formative years of my career. But today is not about myself. Today is about over 900 former high school students that took on the challenge of organizing the symposium and on the way made life-shaping experiences. For a student-run initiative that changes its team on an annual basis, the odds are not necessarily in favor of a long-term future. Yet, here we are, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Zangan Symposium. As Professor Aaron Seller mentioned, each year between 25 and 35 students that have often only just completed their first year at university decide to invest their full energy and enthusiasm into the ISC. It is this remarkable commitment that has always been at the core of 50 years of this symposium. But what makes generations of high school students join this initiative year after year? First, the ISC is a bridge between theory and practice. It is within the first few weeks that we join the ISC when we realize that values such as discipline, punctuality, reliability, and trust really matter. Once in the ISC, we're part of a team, a team on a 10 month journey, tackling seemingly unsolvable challenges and finding answers to questions we didn't even really know they existed. We're part of something much bigger than ourselves and have a chance to take on responsibility. The ISC is the opportunity for a team of students to leave their mark and prove themselves in the real world. An opportunity, however, that requires a great deal of willpower and sacrifice. The commitment to the ISC is voluntary and the demanded work ethic, not exactly how we would imagine a classic student life. It is one thing to talk about becoming something bigger. It is an entirely different one to deliver on it. This critical delta of talking and delivering is the moment to thanking our benefactors and partners for their outstanding support over the years. Ultimately, it is the motivation of pushing our boundaries to leave a mark and the willingness to put our, aside our self-interest for the sake of the whole that is at the core of the ISC spirit. And it's that ISC spirit that creates trust. Trust between all members of an ISC team. Trust between a new ISC team and all the generations of ISC alumni that came before them. Trust between the ISC and our faculty. Trust between us and our partners. And trust between us and the university. Trust that we have been continuing to build and nurture for over 50 years. The ISC is much more than a student organization. It is a DNA. It is a school of life, and what you get is like what you're willing to give. Remarkable and life-changing. I would like to thank you, Professor Aaron Seller, all your former colleagues, and the University of St. Gallen 
for encouraging, supporting and trusting student initiatives like the ISC, START, OIKOS or the Sports Business Club. It really matters. But this ISC spirit is not everything. It is in fact only the prerequisite of the intergenerational dialogue that is at the heart of this Sangalan Symposium. A dialogue between generations that today is needed just as much as it was back in 1968. The pandemic is a prime example of the importance of discourse, solidarity and responsibility between generations. With all the sacrifices, suffering and death that it involves, it has laid bare the vulnerability of our society. Nevertheless, it has also shown us our resilience and our ability to adapt and overcome our challenges. The key element to that is trust. Trust between governments and society, trust between scientists and practitioners, and trust between generations. A trust that can only be reached by a constant and constructive dialogue. As much as the pandemic is a unique situation, in the coming decades, we'll have to overcome similarly fundamental challenges, such as the ever-growing income inequality that threatens to destabilize our societies, or even more importantly, the existential climate crisis. For 50 years, the ISC has been a platform for this intergenerational dialogue. For 50 years, the ISC has been a school of life for over 900 former high school students that are now spread across all continents, holding positions in public offices, corporates, private organizations, and civil society. Let me add to that about 5,000 former high school students that were part of the highly motivated and dedicated support crew. The IC is much more than a student organization. It is an idea and a spirit that may continue to live on for the next 50 years. It is now my honor and pleasure to pass the word to the founding father of this symposium, the man that formed this unique platform and spirit like no other, Wolfgang Schüler. Joy, kudos and appreciation on the occasion of the 50th anniversary. Happy birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, a student-based initiative that hands over the torch and develops continuously over five decades is indeed remarkable. So what is the secret behind the St. Gallen Symposium? The intergenerational dialogue is both timeless and timely, as Rector Ehrenzella addressed and Christian referred to, but let me add, it is never been more relevant than today. In the late 60s and 70s, St. Gallen was perceived from the outside as an island of tranquility compared to the unrest at universities all over the world. One of the assumptions was St. Gallen is a business school. Me and my colleagues disagreed. The difference was size, Swiss DNA, our search for consensus, a flat, accessible university hierarchy, and not least, the fact that we were 1,700 students in 1970 compared to 8,000 today. Professor Hans Ulrich and Dr. Walter Krieg pioneered the so-called St. Gallen Systems approach in management. This concept called for a cohesive concept of macro and micro managerial thought and practice. They were about 25 years ahead of the curve regarding stakeholder management. Facilitating formation of character by entrusting responsibility very early on allowed for a creative drive and design leeway. At the very outset, 
we encountered a lot of skepticism. Our means was the team spirit, the resource, our commitment, and bit by bit, the goodwill vis-a-vis -vis the effort. Building trust, as we see, is never ending. In 1972, the world was challenged by the Club of Rome report, Limits to Growth. While we were challenged by our limits of skills, as well as support, not to speak, the lack of experience. This and many other paradoxes had to be dealt in day by day. Rather than establishing demands, we called for ways to identify new means. This search was as challenging as it was tiring, but it provided one unique chance, learning, learning by doing. The St. Gallen Colloquy links two elements, those between generations and those between thought and practice. Senior public and private leaders engage with scientists and students. St. Gallen provides a safe space for critical and constructive debate based on mutual trust whilst sharing curiosity, cutting-edge insights and experience. What is the value of this setting? Well, the traditional pyramid of knowledge is still relevant. Data, information, knowledge, understanding. The current avalanche of data and abundance of information create profound uncertainty. Coming to sound decisions, however, requires understanding. Discourse is a prerequisite to developing a compass in the face of complexity. Intergenerational communication is essential to evaluating and establishing homogeneous frames of reference and the respected strategy. Youngsters, then, today and tomorrow, are experts in their own right, with implications for universities, governments, the private sector. Getting them engaged is imperative for meeting standards of sustainability. As Christian referred to, the pandemic is a prime example. Translating scientific insights from various disciplines into sound policy is a challenging task. Managing the implementation requires tremendous skills. But it can only succeed if it is considered legitimate by society at large. Individuality and community spirit can be perceived either as paradox or as two sides of the same coin. Economic success in a framework of freedom implies responsibilities. This attitude is true entrepreneurship then, now, and in the future. That being said, the one ingredient that matters most is trust. Trust was and continues to be the rarest and most crucial currency amongst people, institutions, cultures, religions, and countries. In an age of radical uncertainty, it is not just a rare community. It is not just a rare community. No, it is an obligation to strive for if the meaning and the purpose of the idea of the St. Gallen Symposium should continue to unfold. Today, let me thank you 
hundreds of former colleagues for making the St. Gallen Symposia happen. For me and many others, it was and is a journey of lifelong learning. Talking across generations is critical to address issues and develop an agenda of action. The St. Gallen Cosmos serves as an excellent laboratory. Against this background, the exceptional faculty of the last 50 years deserves special recognition and gratitude. The goodwill of the university at many levels, the support of the benefactors, the curiosity of fellow students around the world cannot be understated. But the most important was and is the commitment of the ISC team and their volunteers. All of you inspired us. These were and are till today the ingredients to turn an idea into reality. Some people called it not only in the first years, a mission impossible. Today, 50 years later, the proof is there. The attitude, serving, guiding, learning, and connecting the dots, the formula and the compass to its common care. I leave you with one suggestion. During the discussions, if you spot a vacant chair, don't think it is empty. Imagine the chair is occupied by a member of a generation yet to come and think what he or she would like to inherit from us. I wish you, on behalf of many fellow colleagues, especially with Schneider, Terjewel Nahansen, and Andreas Kirchleger and Benedikt Tensch, not only luck, but the pursuit of this very idea. For you, for you are the guardians of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct privilege to welcome Federal Councillor Karin Keller-Sutter, who represents the Federal Council in a tradition that was first started in the early 70s by the late Federal Councillor Ernst Brugger. Madam, the floor is yours. Dear Chair, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizers of the St. Gallum Symposium for inviting me to say a few words to you today. I'm sure you will understand that I'm always delighted to have an opportunity to come back home. I am particularly pleased to be here at the University of St. Gallen, which the Federal Council acknowledges as one of, the, of Switzerland's internationally acclaimed academic institutions. One important factor in the university's worldwide reputation is the St. Gallen Symposium. The fact that it is organized by the students themselves really sets it apart, and this is something the organizers can be proud of. This year, the symposium is being held for the 50th time. Congratulations. Wolfgang Schürer has just explained how it all began. I find it particularly interesting that the first symposium was organized as a response to the international student unrest of 1968. These students' protests questioned, among other things, our liberal economic order and ultimately the very concept of capitalism. They blamed capitalism for everything that was wrong with the world. The alternative they proposed was a Marxist-inspired economy. But, well, I feel you agree that the world today would be undoubtedly poorer if we had gone down that path. 
What I find remarkable is how the student's body here at the time responded to the critics of 1968. Rather than simply joining in, they created a platform to open a dialogue between young people and the object of their criticism, business leaders. By meeting in person and opening a line of communication between students and decision makers, they wanted to give each side an opportunity to express their opinions and argue their points of view. The aim was to create a better understanding of each other's position, free from the constraints of preconceived notions. Renowned Bulgarian political scientist Ivan Krastev once said, democracy is about people changing their views. By this he meant that when we talk to each other and exchange our points of view, the stronger argument will ultimately prevail. Where such a dialogue exists, each side takes the other's concerns seriously. And this is what creates trust. Liberal thinking has its roots in the spirit of the Enlightenment. It is based on the conviction that in a democracy, genuine progress is only possible through the clash of ideas in an open debate. The students who founded this symposium wanted to open up such debate and create a sense of trust. It is no coincidence, therefore, that the theme of this year's event is Trust Matters. There are clearly historical reasons, but trust is also one issue and a very important issue today. Our world is not unlike that 50 years ago. Trust in business and politics has eroded over, over the years, and particularly following the financial crisis of 2008. The criticism today is loud and fierce, and it is not only coming from the left, but also from the right. The concept of globalization has come under threat. Protectionism is on the rise. Closing and blocking is becoming more popular than seeking uh, a balance between frontier and collaboration. The increase in populist leaders around the world is, is fueled by such trends and public confidence in our liberal economic system has taken a serious blow. Alongside the doubts about our market economy is a growing scepticism towards the ideals of a liberal democracy. As Ivan Krastev says, many people think the good thing about democracy is that you can vote government out of power. But the bad thing is that this changes nothing. The economy and politics are thus facing a similar situation as back in 1968. Both are coming under serious fire and have to work hard to restore, to restore public trust. In Switzerland, with our system of direct democracy, this is manifested more rapidly and directly than in other countries. Recently, we have had two referendums which reflect growing skepticism towards the business world. One was the Responsible, Responsible Business Initiative that sought to make uh, Swiss companies liable in Switzerland for alleged labour rights violations or environmental damage anywhere in the world, even by their subsidiaries. The initiative failed, but only by a very narrow margin. In another referendum a few months later, Swiss voters were called to decide on a free trade agreement with Indonesia. While this may seem something of a formality, in fact, the referendum passed by a surprisingly small majority. The chairman of Nestle, Paul Bulke, recently commented on this in an interview with the Neue Zürcher Zeitung, saying, somewhere we stopped understanding each other and lost the connection we once had, and that's a shame. I think it is a broad social problem that decisions are often no longer made based on arguments and facts, but on emotions. We don't listen to each other enough. The business community once again needs to make its voice heard and explain its positions on urgent social and environmental issues. It must, and especially in Switzerland, seek dialogue with the people and better understanding of their needs and concerns. Only then can, be, uh, can the business community restore the trust it has lost. This is perhaps even more important now than 50 years ago. In today's digital, internet-based economy, 
trust is a key component, especially as the people we are doing business with are often unknown or based in another country. In many business models, the personal relationship is gone and where trust is lacking, people are likely to back out of a transaction at the first time uh, or first sight of any doubt. We cannot have or leave politics uh, to the politicians alone. We also need flesh and blood business people to go out and explain what they are doing, why they are doing it, and how their operations can benefit society. If the business community withdraws from this discussion, we can say goodbye to economic growth, prosperity, and at last our model of society based on freedom and responsibility. But the importance of trust in business and politics goes beyond the world of digital transactions. Renowned politi political scientist Francis Fukuyama looked into the question of why some economy consistently far better than others do. He found that the single most important difference was the level of trust among society. Doing business is easier, more efficient in countries which place value on honesty, reliability and integrity and which trust their institutions and courts. These countries have a discernible compet competitive advantage. Uh, Fukuyama includes Switzerland among such high trust nations. This is undoubtedly linked to our system of direct democracy. On the face of it, it may seem quite burdens burdensome for companies to have get involved in so many referendums. However, this forces the business community to listen and respond to public opinion. They have an opportunity to communicate their point of view, but in return, they may also have to address some of the criticisms they face and adapt their way of doing business. This ongoing dialogue is essential for building trust. And it is at least potentially responsible for Switzerland's economic success on the international stage. Clearly, as it says in this year's theme, trust matters. For the past 50 years, the St. Gallen Symposium has provided a space for such dialogue between business and society and between corporate leaders and the younger generation, something that the Federal Council acknowledges and greatly appreciates. Keep up for good work, for the sake of an open market economy, for the sake of our democracy and for the sake of liberty. Thank you. I will now hand over the the floor to the heads of the organizing committee. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Councillor. We're standing here with pride. In our conversations, you've shown that trust matters. Also, matters to you. And yet, we're standing here slightly frustrated, I would say, that we had to place this topic of generational trust onto the agenda in the first place. Since us three have been born, the doomsday clock has shifted from 14 minutes to midnight in 1997 to 100 seconds in 2020, the closest it has ever been to midnight. However, being here at a business university, it kind of calms us because we have been trained to deliver great solutions in the span of a 90 seconds elevator ride. What can we do to resolve the issues of climate change, societal divides, or post-pandemic life in little time that we have left? We have to rely on trust in times when it is contested the most. Our predecessors at the 49th St. Gallen Symposium two years ago have coined the phrase, we need to talk. We want to build on that and say, we still need to talk. But more importantly, we need to start trusting each other in order for us to be able to work together. This equation comes with an additional challenge. Before we can rely on trust, we have to ask ourselves, should we, or even can we, 
still think of trust as this currency that has to be earned the hard way? Or do we have to have a paradigm shift in our understanding of it? There simply is not enough time left on our clock to build trust the old way. Instead, we have to learn to solidify the trust as we go along. For that, we, the generations who will bear the consequences of today's actions, are here to talk, but we're also here to listen. And we're here to act together with you for the next generations in mind. The role of the St. Gallen Symposium is to be the seismograph of the pressing issues of our time. We are the figurative table at which all generations can come together, speak eye to eye, and most importantly, remain in dialogue. Therefore, we invite you to join this table, be confronted with the questions that hurt, but you have to be open to find the solutions to the issues that matter to us and to you and the next generations. The time is over to play the blame game. We're left with no other option but to collaborate for finding these necessary solutions. We are here to take our part and therefore we offer you our trust. And now we ask something in return. We, the young generation, give you trust that you are implementing dialogue on every table about what matters the most for current and future generations. Either the table where the most brilliant minds around you come together to develop concrete solutions or the table where uh, your board members uh, meet to, to find new perspectives or out-of-the-box solutions um, for, for the issues we are all facing together. And while you are at these tables, we are also asking for a seat. Either a seat in your mind or, if you allow us to, sometimes actually with a seat at your table. Only in that way we can contribute and lead, lead together with and for the next generation in mind. A lot had to be done to, re to reach this point. Um, with numerous significant protests as the 68 student protest movement or the recent climate protests, the young generation raised their voices clearly. But to be honest, uh, now is no longer time, uh, it's no longer time to, to play the bl blame game and to, to raise the awareness for the urgent problems. We are past this point. Now is the time for the raised voices of the young generations to be heard and jointly discussed at the table. It is about listening to one another, learning from each other and acting together. It is time to walk the dialogue. Make no mistake, we understand that this demand does not come easy. It may be hard to have someone sit at your table who might look at you and tell you that you are a causal part of this problem. But when we say we trust you, we also mean that we stop blaming you. As long as you help us to move forward and to find solutions for the, matters, for the things that matter now. And we really mean now, even if that requires an almost painful amount of vulnerability, commitment, and courage from you. So, where do we go from here? Well, there are two options. Either we tell you what to do, but we are not so sure that you will appreciate that. Or you take this task seriously and think about how you can transform this table that we just pictured from you into a reality in your life. And when we see each other again next year, you tell us about your stories, Tell us about the things that you have done that have created a huge impact. Tell us about a thought that had never crossed your mind that changed your perspective. 
But most importantly, tell us about the young people that you have brought to the table, that you have listened to, and that you have collaborated with now more than ever. Now it is my honor to hand over the word to you, Peter Fosa, Chairman of our Board of Trustees, to share with us your experience, the influence and the collaboration with the young generation. Federal Councillor, dear Karin, President of the University of St. Colin, Professor Schürer, our founder, a very special welcome, and it's a privilege to have you with us today. Dear members of the ISC and the alumni um, committees as well, Lord Griffiths, Ambassador Barton, Ministers, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen around the world. It is my great pleasure to speak with you today and to celebrate the jubilee of the 50th St. Collins Symposium. Working with the next generation to create ideas and solutions for the world of tomorrow has been the aspiration of our initiatives for 50 years now. But rarely in that half century have global challenges been so stark. We have been confronted by a pandemic for more than a year, which is a major turning point, especially for our youth. In addition, the geopolitical situation is changing and remains unstable in different parts of the world. And ahead of us is the immense task of effectively addressing climate change and other environmental challenges. The path we set in the next few years will shape the world for generations to come. At this very extraordinary moment in time, it is all the more important to maintain an exchange between committed and engaged young people and decision makers on the other side from business, politics and science, as we are doing here at the 50th St. Collins Symposium. Looking back to the last few decades, significant social, economic and techno technological progress have taken place, but we have left many pressing issues unsolved and have seen other new and daunting challenges emerging. But here I would like to emphasize a positive message. I distinctly sense a much different attitude and approach to decision-making among those in positions of responsibility, especially in the last few years. I've never seen so many discussions and concrete initiatives regarding pressing societal challenges on the agenda of my colleagues. The St. Gallen Symposium's vision is for current leadership to lead with the next generation in mind. And I observe across sectors and regions, a strong sense of urgency to work towards that vision. As we heard before, it's not about blaming, it's now about deba debating and taking actions. Our initiative is deepening its focus on the topics most relevant for the next generation. It's opportune that sustainability, digital science and resilient health systems are advanced at the University of St. Gallen through new schools and the newly established medical master program. We are fortunate to have such a strong intellectual and scientific partner on our side, and we will continue to connect this expertise with more than 300 universities around the world and with leaders from business, politics and civil society. I see the clear will and sincere commitment among leadership. But I also observe a strong need to infuse these efforts with new ideas, attitudes and learnings. And that's where the St. Colin Symposium and universities like St. Colin come in. Through our 60 sessions over these three days and continuing year round with our cross-generational dialogue 
and publications, we want to inspire and help create new solutions. In each of the sessions, we gather global specialists and share the latest know-how with regards to pertinent cross-sectoral challenges. To these discussions, we bring hundreds of current decision makers and two to 300 brilliant young minds from around the world who challenge the status quo and offer their perspective on the issues that matter to them. The dialogue and co-creation happening at the symposium represents a unique approach to a truly cross-generational, mutual way of learning and improving. One that brings together both experiences to be passed on to the next generation and fresh thinking that can help disrupt traditional approaches. So we can definitely celebrate the platform for dialogue that is more relevant and educational than ever before. And I'm delighted to see how the International Students Committee, together with the St. Gallen Foundation for International Studies, has reinvented the dialogue for the next 50 years. Our new global setup, along with an impressive lineup of speakers from international corporations, politics, civil society, culture and sports, and of course, the participants from some hundred different countries all underscore that the initiative, which began more than 50 years ago by Wolfgang Schürer and his friends, is now the most relevant platform for cross-generational dialogue in the world. That presents both responsibility and the possibility for the next 50 teams of students that will interact with the world here from St. Gallen. So please let me close this, this ceremony with my greatest appreciation to the more than 900 students that have driven this initiative and all the partners and speakers and institutions that have lent their engagement. As an initiative, we also would like to thank the committed young people from more than 150 countries who have been in dialogue with current decision makers, challenged them, and at the same time benefited from their wealth of experience. Thank you to all of you. As the chairman of the St. Gallen Foundation for International Studies, I can promise that our whole organization will strive to continue on this path. We are proud to generate new thoughts and ideas, help to share the latest know-how and create better understanding among generations and between different parts of the world. With this, I can only suggest, please listen in, share your perspectives, and engage also in the second part of our global conference. And never forget the empty chair which our founder has just mentioned. And enjoy the creative moments of, in the program. The 50th and International Students Committee and our foundation team have put together what I know will be an unforgettable Jubilee experience. Personally, I very much look forward to the upcoming session, Reconnecting Our World, which will start in a moment, because as this title and the global cross-generational lineup are the perfect showcase of the St. Gallen Symposium of the future. Enjoy this dialogue and stay connected not just until tomorrow, but year-round with the St. Collins Symposium.